The third experiment looks at uh, radiation decay and uh, we actually have it set up and I've given you data for three separate samples but this is just how we would do it. So we have a dose calibrator and the dose calibrator has a chamber where we put our source and I'll show you that in a sec and then we actually have the recording um, device so we would actually choose a radio pharmaceutical or an unknown radio pharmaceutical and it will actually give us the amount of megabex that we have recorded at any given point of time. So if we actually um, remove, um, and this is called the jib, okay, so the part that goes inside it is called the jib, and if we put a source in there, and let's pretend that we don't know what that source is, and we drop it in the dose calibrator, and we monitor what happens over a period of time. So at time zero, we, we make a record of the amount of activity that's stored, and then we come back at 15 minutes and record it again, and 30 minutes and record it again. What we'll see with radiation decay is obviously a decrease in counts over time. And depending on what the radio pharmaceutical is or what the radionuclide is specifically, is, is that that decay rate will um, be different. And so we can use the data that we're recording um, as part of this experiment to then calculate what the actual half-life is. And by using the half-life, we could hopefully be able to identify which radio pharmaceuticals or which radionuclides are involved. So that's experiment three.